this is something that I just can't get over. I can't get over the gentle lady from South Carolina talking about white privilege. Who bribed Hunter Biden to be here today? That's my first question. Um, second question, you are the epitome of white privilege, coming into the oversight committee, spitting in our face, ignoring a congressional subpoena to be deposed. What are you afraid of? You have no balls to come up here and- M Mr. Chairman, point of inquiry. Mr. Chairman, um, if the, the lady recognizes, if, 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 if the gentle lady Christ wants to hear from names? Hunter Biden, we can hear from him right now, Mr. And Chairman. Let's take a vote Christ and hear from I'm Hunter speaking. Biden. What are, are you afraid of? Hold on, hold on, of? hold on, hold on. Order, why, why order, are order. Are women allowed to, women allowed to speak in here or no? Are, okay. are women allowed to speak in here or no? Because you keep interrupting me. I, I'll interrupt the you chairman. Keep interrupting. I don't know that he's a lady. It was a spit in the face, at least of mine as a black woman for you to talk about what white privilege looks like, especially from that side of the aisle. And let me quote your now ousted speaker and what he had to say about the Republican Party and y'all's lack of diversity. When you look at the Democrats, they actually look like America. When I look at my party, we look like the most restrictive country club in America. To be clear, whatever happens to your little leader, it's going to be because of the actions that he took. So you can talk all you want to about how January 6th was nonsense, but all of y'all were running at that time. Y'all were grabbing y'all's gas masks and y'all were running to your offices because you didn't know if they were coming to kill you. You should have cared that somebody was there to protect you, but instead you want to play games because you found out that it was your leader that decided that he wanted to propagate an insurrection on our country. So don't tell me that you care about the Constitution, because you don't. All you care about is Trump getting reelected, and I'll yield the last of my time to my leader. I was accused by my colleague on the other side of the aisle about my white privilege. I want to say, number one, as a former ranking member of the Civil Rights Subcommittee under Chairman Raskin last session, I take great pride as a white female Republican to address the inadequacies in our country. I come from a district where rich and poor is literally black and white, black versus white on most days. I am very well aware of our rich history and try to recognize it as best as I can in the position that I have. And I resent the fact that you're gonna throw that in my face up here. I'm one of the few people that you'll see on my side of the aisle trying to do the right thing to the right people every single day. It was a very beautiful speech uh, by the gentlelady lady um, who, as she mentioned, was uh, helped lead on the majority, the now majority side, uh, the civil rights and civil liberties su subcommittee. But I think it's so exemplary of the point that she also oversaw the elimination of the civil rights subcommittee on this committee, which really kind of gives the whole game away. We show up, we give speeches, we give flowery words, but at the end of the day, participate in the structural erosion of the rights and representation of people uh, that, that are marginalized, women, people of color, people that just need to see their due process and civil liberties protected in this country. But I will move on. Do you believe, Ms. Wiley, that you need to have a PhD in biology to know what a woman is, yes or no? Is that a yes or a I no? Just, I first so want to say you I'm are right. Out of time. It, I am so sorry, and you should never you didn't have to do suffer it. from sexual violence. Do you need a PhD violence. in biology to know what a woman is? I've been rape shamed by the left, and I'm not going to allow any of that stuff to happen today. Do you believe that you need a PhD to define what a woman is? Yes or no is I the question. I think every woman is able to define herself as a woman. It's not how it works. There's biology and science. I would encourage every American to follow the science. It's been interesting listening to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. Um, use phrases such as, quote, follow the science, unquote, and black letter law. Um, since science overwhelmingly has established that climate change is real and caused by human beings, especially oil and gas companies, I'm sure they will agree that if we are to follow the science, then we should stop denying climate change. Joe Biden is the definition of dark money. How much money did his family get paid off and how were his bills paid? Joe Biden got bribed and it was to the tune of millions and millions of dollars and the left wants to normalize the <laughs> of bribery. Like I just cannot get over the fact that we're gonna normalize this and we're calling Joe Biden's bribery, quote, a specific topic. No, it's bribery, it's money laundering, it's prostitution rings and I'm not a conspiracy theorist for putting these theories out there. I wanna respond to uh, my friend and colleague from South Carolina and some of her allegations and statements that she made uh, about this so-called impeachment inquiry. 
I believe that she stated that Joe Biden got bribes, committed money laundering, and engaged in a prostitution ring. She says there are texts, emails, and phone calls. But then she says that we should trust the evidence itself. And with that, I agree, because the evidence itself shows absolutely no connection between Joe Biden and any of those allegations. So we are now entering into what is so-called an impeachment inquiry, ostensibly because the Republicans say they need more information and that somehow by the Speaker of the House unilaterally declaring an investigation, an impeachment inquiry, that changes this committee's authority. It does not. Okay, all right, so we love the Constitution today, and we also wanna talk about foreign money coming in. Have y'all seen the report that was just produced where this chairman decided that he was going to block this committee from receiving additional information about y'all's guy, Trump, and all the money that he took. From what we did receive, we know that Trump got almost $6 million that we can account for, and we know that, that's more, that there's more there. From China specifically, we found almost $8 million total that he accepted from foreign governments while he was serving as the president of these United States. But we're concerned about the president's son, the president's son who has not been involved in his administration. I just want to run it back, though, to the very beginning, because this is something that I just can't get over. I can't get over the gentle lady from South Carolina talking about white privilege. So let me tell you something. Y'all don't know what white privilege looks like, but I'm going I'm to show you a little bit of something. You see, you want to talk about a two-tier justice system, and this is the only time that y'all have ever referenced it when this country has a history when it comes to black and brown folk of having two separate sets of rules. And right now what you want to do is have two separate sets of rules because Mr. Moskowitz offered y'all a fair situation. He said he would vote for Hunter to be held in contempt if y'all voted to hold all, even if you remove all of the members of Congress, there's still other people that y'all haven't decided that y'all have excuses for, but y'all don't want to hold them in contempt. But for some reason, it makes sense to hold Hunter Biden in contempt, who has tried to comply. And let me tell you why nobody wants to talk to y'all behind closed doors, because y'all lie. That's just the bottom line. You have done it thus far in this investigation. You have done it this far as it relates to this committee. In every single hearing, y'all spin, spin, spin. I don't know how y'all are still standing right now because you should be quite dizzy from all the spinning that you're constantly doing when it comes to spinning the truth. You talk about free and fair elections, but you back a guy who we know tried to steal the election. And this isn't about what Democrats have to say. Let me remind you, for those of you that don't know how the justice system works, it's not a matter of the president went in and indicted Trump, but we are talking about grand juries. Grand juries are comprised of American citizens and the people that have entered pleas of guilty that will be flipping on your leader in a minute, they are Republicans. I do want to point that out. And half of them were Republicans that were handpicked by Donald Trump himself. I'd like to just add a couple of points to what you've said. On January 6th, Senator Ted Cruz described it as terrorism. They later came to attack him during their revisionist uh, Orwellian Stalinist attempt to rewrite history. Unfortunately for them, we know that there were 147 or 48 of our officers who were wounded, bloodied, and hospitalized by the uh, rabid mob that beset the Capitol that day. We know that Kevin McCarthy, one of their deposed leaders over on their side, called Donald Trump from his office to complain about how his people were storming the Capitol and putting people's lives in danger. And Donald Trump said, no, no, those aren't my people, those are Antifa. And McCarthy corrected him and said, no, those are your people, Mr. President. To which Donald Trump said, well, maybe they just care a little bit more about who won the election than you did, Kevin McCarthy. You guys have got to deal with reality here. By the way, the speech and debate clause stands for the exact opposite principle who our distinguished new member uh, uh, th just spoke about a moment ago. It says that members that members of Congress Mr. cannot Chairman, be questioned Mr. anywhere Chairman. else other than Congress. So Point he should privilege. read the speech or debate Mr. clause Chairman. aloud. Uh, let, uh, let, let, him, let him finish his sentence there. Now, Chair recognizes Mr. Burchett from Mr. Tennessee Chairman. for five minutes. 
This committee has been investigating these allegations for more than eight months. This committee of uh, House Republicans have obtained uh, more than 12,000 documents, pages of bank records, more than 2,000 suspicious activity reports, numerous hours of witness testimony, texts, emails. And the problem they have is not that they can't get the evidence. The problem they have is that the evidence does not support their allegations. And so why are we going to spend the next few months on a bogus and sham impeachment inquiry? Because Donald Trump wants them to. And Donald Trump has been calling them and urging them to do it because he was impeached twice. One of those impeachments of Donald Trump was because he tried to extort the president of Ukraine to investigate Hunter Biden. The president of Ukraine refused. Unfortunately, House Republicans don't have the spine that President Zelensky has, and they are now doing Donald Trump's bidding. Let me move on to the topic today, and I know that my colleagues would like to narrowly focus uh, this hearing on their sudden grave concerns about third-party litigation funding. That's right, my Republican colleagues are having a hearing to criticize and restrict the free market from investing in litigation. Well, how could that possibly be that the party of free markets would want to restrict the free market? Well, I know why. Because big corporations and special interests don't like the fact that independent investors can support litigation that otherwise would not be able to be brought because of the expense. And I also find it ironic that Republicans are criticizing third-party funding in legal proceedings when they themselves have engaged in the same kind of third-party funding. And I'd like to ask unanimous consent to introduce uh, for the record, an uh, article entitled, FBI Whistleblowers Admit Taking Money from Ex-Trump Official. It's no surprise that the Republicans are doing the bidding of the same special interests who have been spending massive amounts of money, of dark money, to control the Supreme Court. But the odd thing is that we're here talking about the ethical issues of third-party litigation funding and not the ethical issues in the Supreme Court. In June, I led a letter of 18 former prosecutors and law enforcement officials urging the Chief Justice to abide by his own declaration that he would take care of these ethics concerns and saying that if he were to do that appropriately and seriously, he would first have to establish an independent investigative body within the court that can provide transparency and accountability and two, that he would have to establish a dedicated ethics council to provide advice to the justices on their ethical issues. Unfortunately, his response to that letter just simply thanked me for writing it. And that's not good enough. And so my time is up, but I would urge my colleagues on the other side of the aisle who ostensibly are concerned with ethics, that they hold a hearing on the dramatic and absurd ethical lapses of Supreme Court justices and make sure that we implement a, the, uh, an ethics code on the Supreme Court, which, is the, which are the only nine justices in our entire federal judiciary who do not have to abide by our ethics code. And I yield back. As also the Republican side had mentioned in their many uh, raisings of the January 6th committee, that it's not just Hunter Biden, you, me, any individual subject uh, to, to equal treatment under the law, to be held up to accountability under the law, but it is also these committees and this committee that is subject to oversight and law. We must comply with the law here as well. Now, I may be one of the very few people that actually believes in Congress, you know, in this country, but I do, and many of us do here. And we have an obligation to engage in good faith participation to execute and comply with the subpoena. 
The chairman said in front of the country several times to Hunter Biden, you can show up here in front of the world, in front of the public. Hunter Biden took him up on that offer. He said, I will show up in public. I will show up in public. He showed up here today. He showed up here in the past. And Mr. Chairman, I know you do your best with what you've got, but you've got members here that have submitted falsified evidence to the record. You have members here that have submitted and mischaracterized closed door hearings. And people want to say back and forth at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what party it's happened from. You've got members who've engaged in revenge porn in this committee. So it is understandable why Hunter Biden would want to testify in front of the public for the American people to be able to witness that testimony uh, it, uh, for themselves. You've got members who've defied subpoenas. You've got members who we are um, one year into the term asking what the rules are at the beginning of the committee. The book was given to us on day one. And so what we should do is allow the man to testify. I believe in the power of the Oversight Committee. Frankly, I believe in it regardless of whether Republicans or Democrats have the chair, because I believe that this committee should have the power of oversight. And we cannot do that on a partisan basis. And so for that, I implore this committee to allow Hunter Biden to testify publicly. I implore and I ask for that to happen. And we cannot do that by getting engaged in this back and forth on a, on a defiance of the subpoena. Let him comply. Let him do it today. Let him do it tomorrow. But let the man do it. And with that, I yield back to the ranking member. Thank you, Ms. Ocasio-Cortez. I think you went right to the heart of the issue here. Um, you know, if this ended up going to court, Mr. Chairman, and I hope it doesn't, I really hope that this committee will act in a way to negotiate and, and uh, achieve a compromise with the witness. But if it goes to the court, it's going to present a novel question. What happens when a committee represented by its distinguished chairman goes out in public and repeatedly invites and challenges a witness to come before the committee, and then that witness gives the answer, yes, I will come in. At that point, the committee pulls a bait and switch and says, well, we actually don't want you to come before the full committee as was offered repeatedly in public by the chairman, but instead we'd like you to come to a back room and do it there in a closed deposition. Now, undoubtedly, if that had been the original offer, the committee would stand in a very good place the way we did with Mr. Biggs and Mr. Perry and Mr. Jordan because they were told to come in, they were subpoenaed, and they blew off the subpoenas uh, of the committee, which is why I don't think anybody should be voting on that side other than Ms. Mace, because Ms. Mace is the one who took the position that the rule of law means something. And I take the position, if we give somebody a subpoena, they should come in. But there's a very, there's a very sticky problem now. What happens when we give them one offer A and then switch it over to offer B? That's why I hope you will work it out, Mr. Chairman. Thank and, you for yielding.